is good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video tonight. I have your WWE Hell in a Cell 2019 full show review and results for you guys. As you guys know, these videos work as I'm going to run through the entire show, breaking down every single thing that happened at WWE Hell in a Cell 2019, breaking down the matches, giving you my own thoughts and personal opinions about each match, each few going into it, what happened at the show, the attires, the set, or anything unique that happened, and everything in between. Going into this show, guys, to be honest with you, I really wasn't looking forward to that much. You know, we only had three matches announced on this card. A ton of the matches that were added later on weren't even built. You know, most of them weren't even built up at all. And literally the day of the show, I think, like the morning of the show, we only had three matches announced. They added another match on Instagram, and then later on on Twitter, they, they announced like four or five more matches to the card. So with only three matches announced on this card, not a ton of build, could WWE deliver a great show with Hell in a Cell coming into this thing? My own personal thoughts, guys, uh, looking forward to this show, I really wasn't. You know, there's like one or two matches on the show that I was really looking forward to, and there was only three matches announced, so you do the math, I guess I was looking forward to two-thirds of the pay-per-view, but now that they announced the rest of the show, would I be impressed with it, and would it deliver? We're gonna find out together, guys, as we go through each individual matchup, giving you my own thoughts and opinions, so with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and get started. So starting things off with the kickoff show, guys, we do have a singles match between Natalya and Lacey Evans, and you guys know I'm not a big Lacey Evans supporter, and I do like Natalya, but she's not my favorite in the ring by any stretch of the imagination. However, this match kind of delivered, you know, nothing too memorable, but it was, I, I'd say it was pretty much maybe a little bit better than a Raw match, or if equal to a Raw match, but uh, I think they told a story well, you know, they had the leg of Natalya, they were trying to, you know, mix it up, they had some gimmick taunting going back and forth, so that was appreciated, but Natalya does ultimately win with the sharpshooter after Lacey Evans misses a moonsault, and I, I totally thought that Lacey Evans was going to win this matchup, but she does not, and Natalya picks up the win. I don't think there was any, you know, consolation prize for this. I don't think there was a number one contendership on the line or anything like that, but Natalya does defeat Lacey Evans with the sharpshooter. So we kick off the main show, guys, with our first Hell in a Cell matchup of the night between my girl Becky Lynch taking on Sasha Banks, two of my favorite ladies in the entire world going head-to-head -head here, over the Raw Women's Championship in what would be our first of our two Hell in a Cell matchups. This was one of the matches that I was looking forward to that was announced, Seth and the Fiend obviously being the other one, and then, of course, this one. And I just have to say, ladies and gentlemen, this matchup right here was Super Fire Flames Fart Nasty Farticle Salad. This matchup right here is is what the standard of women's wrestling should be. I said it in a tweet and I'll say it again. Hard-nosed, head down, high impact action. This is what women's wrestling should be right here. I'm not talking about all the chairs and stuff. I'm just talking about the creativity, the hard-nosed hitting, not afraid to take a bump, putting your life on the line, freaking bringing it to the other woman and putting on a hell of a show, telling a great story. This ish was great. This is definitely a match of the year contender and if you missed Hell in a Shell 2019, go back and watch this matchup right now. After this review, if you missed the show, go watch this matchup. If you watch up any other matchup from the show, this is the one to watch. This matchup right here was fantastic. I'm talking just very creative spots throughout, very high pace. I don't think they slowed down for a freaking second, guys. It From the opening bell, Sasha jumps Becky Lynch, and they literally go at each other and beat the hell out of one another for to, for 15 minutes or however the hell. I don't know how long they went, but it, it, freak, it was a banger, guys. This was a banger and definitely one of my favorite matches of the year, and they started off this show hellaciously. This is how you do it. Becky Lynch proving over and over again why she's a GOAT, and Sasha Banks as well. Just both ladies bringing the house down, and I love this match. Freaking love this match. Becky Lynch does defeat Sasha after hitting a Bexploder suplex off the top rope onto a pile of chairs and then immediately locking in the disarm her, and she retains the championship, which is very surprising. I thought for sure Sasha Banks was going to be taking the championship off of Becky here, but that does not take place, and Becky Lynch does retain the title. What a hellacious matchup to open Hell in a Cell, man. Very proud to watch this matchup. I'll definitely be going back and watching this matchup again in my lifetime. That's how good it was. Great stuff, ladies. Congratulations to Becky Lynch. Epic stuff. I cannot wait for the draft to see where Sasha Banks ends up, either on Raw or SmackDown, but what a fantastic opener to Hell in a Cell 2019. Next up, guys, we had the tag team match between Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan taking on Harper and Rowan, and I did not know that they switched this match to a Tornado Tag match, so when I found out that it was going to be a Tornado Tag match, I was super excited because I love Tornado Tag matches. They're very fun. They're very unique. You know, it's non-stop action. You ain't got to wait on a guy to tag anybody. It's all four men in the ring. It's practically a fatal four-way, but two-on-two, -two, obviously, and it's freaking nice. There's just four men going at each other all the time, and a very fun matchup right here. I was actually 
actually very intrigued throughout. I thought they had some great sequences. There were some cool spots. You had some great interactions. The, the chemistry between Harper and Rowan was very fun to see with the weapons and the barricade and the announce tables also throwing in. I think that Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns had incredible chemistry as well. The way they flowed and their sequences and their timing was very nice. And I actually enjoyed this match a lot. I thought, well, we are, we are two for two so far in this pay-per-view. And I really wasn't looking forward to this matchup. But once I heard that it was a tornado tag, I was like, okay, we may be on to something. And by God, did they deliver. I do like all four of these men. So that, that definitely helped the matchup. And it was just a fun matchup overall. However, um, the ending I was a bit disappointed with as far as the victor goes. I could have sworn that Harper and Rowan probably should have won. However, in my predictions video, I did predict Roman and Daniel Bryan winning. I would have really liked to seen Harper and Rowan pick up the victory, obviously, but Roman and Daniel Bryan do end up winning, and it was a fun matchup overall. I did enjoy it, and we are two for two thus far in the night. What a good matchup. I'm ready for the next one. Next up, guys, we had a matchup that was confirmed on the kickoff show between my boy Randy Orton taking on another one of my boys, Mustafa Ali, right here. Longtime Randy Orton fan here going head-to-head -head with Ali, and this one was pretty good. I mean, it wasn't too, you know, nothing too, too memorable. However, the finish was very nice. You know, the whole story, Randy Orton was pretty much dominating Ali, you know, working the ribs. He had a massive bruise on his ribs where Randy, like, plopped him on the announce table like Randy Orton always does. You know, he threw him really hard into the turnbuckle post. Really good stuff there between the two, but the finish came when Ali reversed the RKO. He, like, did a handstand to reverse the RKO. He tried to do his little roll-through face smash move. I can't remember what the hell it's called, but he does the roll-through and as soon as he jumps up, Randy Orton caught him with an RKO out of nowhere and won the matchup 1-2-3. Pretty fun match. You know, nothing, again, that was too memorable, but it was pretty fun to watch, and it was cool to see these two mix it up, and maybe we're entering a little mini feud. I'm not sure, but Randy Orton does get the victory over Ali. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Women's Tag Team Championship match between Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss taking on the Kabuki Warriors, terrible tag team name, which consists of Asuka and Kyrie Sane. While I love Asuka and Kyrie Sane as a team, I am not a big fan of Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross as a team. I just cannot buy it. I cannot get behind it. However, this match actually was pretty good. I actually really enjoyed it. I thought that all four women brought it. I don't know what was in the water tonight, but everybody felt like they needed to go out there and give some effort, and everybody was clicking, man. It just seemed like everybody wanted to put on a show tonight. Everybody was grinding. Everybody was putting in an effort and it showed in this matchup. I really liked it. Um, I didn't know that Asuka and Kyrie Sane were heels necessarily. I thought they were just, you know, sort of like tweeners. Like, they really didn't have an identity but they totally acted like heels in this matchup, which was kind of odd to me. I don't know if they've been doing that on TV, but if they have, I haven't noticed it. But uh, this was very fun. I, th I thought it was pretty solid. Somewhat like Roman and you know, uh, their match early on. Uh, it probably, it wasn't as good as that, but it it kind of reminded me of that. I was like kind of just, I don't know, it, even though this matchup had zero build, you know, they just announced this tonight, and if there was any build to it, I didn't have any idea about it, but anyways, uh, this matchup was solid, and Asuka, at the end of the matchup, hits Nikki Cross with some green mist, Tajiri style, hits her with a roundhouse kick, and that is it. One, two, three, the Kabuki Warriors, terrible tag team name. Asuka and Kyrie Sane are your new women's tag team champions, and while I really don't give a damn about these titles, because they're pretty much meaningless. WWE hasn't put any effort into building them up. This was a good matchup, and I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty solid, and Alexa Bliss was out there taking bumps and actually giving him a damn, and it was it was nice, man. But I'm very glad that Asuka and Kyrie Sane won, and I'm interested to see where they go from here. I would love to see them build up this division. However, I don't think that's ever going to happen, so sadly, I don't think they'll go anywhere from here, but uh, it is nice to see Asuka and Kyrie Sane win in a pretty solid matchup here tonight at Hell in a Cell. Next up, guys, we have the six-man tag team match between the OC, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, and the United States champion, AJ Styles, taking on the Viking War Raider farts in a bag with their mystery partner, who turned out to be Braun Strowman. And this is something I will say about that. I was very disappointed that it was Braun Strowman. But then again, I would have been very disappointed if it was my boy, Cedric Alexander, because he has been feuding with the OC and AJ Styles for like five weeks now, and that would have been a very boring match that we've seen so many times before. And then I was thinking, well, what if it's John Morrison? I was like, well, that would have been a very boring and just anticlimactic way to debut John Morrison back in WWE. So th th really, the whole mystery partner angle was very dumb and unnecessary, and they totally just added this match to the card to fill out the card. And I think that this matchup was very just unnecessarily unnecessary, and it shouldn't have been on the pay-per-view to begin with. Also, I don't know why this matchup ended in DQ. That is how the thing ended. AJ Styles was in the ring with Braun, and then it was dumb because Braun was about to load up AJ Styles with a 
the power slam, you know, to win the matchup. But then Carl Anderson and Lou Gallows come in the ring to help their partner AJ Styles. And as soon as they attack Braun, it's a DQ, which doesn't make any sense to me. That was totally just dumb, and and it was just it, it was just unnecessary, man. This matchup shouldn't have even been on the card. Waste of our time, and it literally meant nothing. Uh, Braun Strowman ends up uh, hitting AJ Styles in the face, like with a punch, like a right hand to the face when he went for the phenomenal forearm, and it sort of like KO'd AJ Styles, and he was real stumbly out of the arena. Just very unnecessary match. Don't know why it was here, but it was on the card regardless, and it ended in a disqualification. Next up, guys, we had the rematch of a rematch between Trash King Corbin taking on Chad Gable, and we have seen this matchup a couple times now. I think we've seen it, you know, in the King of the Ring finals. I think we saw it in a rematch on Raw, and now we are seeing it for a third time here in this matchup at Hell in a Cell. I do not know why we're getting this matchup, honestly. I thought this feud was pretty much over. Uh, I guess not, so, so we had this matchup again. It wasn't a bad match by any means, but it wasn't anything that we haven't seen before between the two, and I don't know why this matchup was necessary. You know, uh, Trash Trash Corbin comes out and he gets on the mic. He calls Chad Gable Shorty Gable. So I guess uh, he decides the third matchup is the best time to do this. Uh, I, I don't know about that, but that was just kind of weird to me. But Trash Corbin tries to get the scepter, you know, the King of the Ring scepter, that, and he wanted to hit Chad Gable in the face with it. He ended up missing and getting rolled up by Chad Gable and losing this matchup here. So Chad Gable pins the King of the Ring King Corbin or Trash Corbin or did sexually trash mitted disease Corbin. And Chad Gable picks up the win, which I'm all for. You guys know I love Chad Gable. I, I don't like Trash Corbin, so that's cool with me. I just don't know why we got this matchup in the first place. But anyways, nonetheless, Chad Gable defeats Trash Corbin. Next up, guys, we had the SmackDown Live Women's Championship match between Charlotte and Bayley. I like these two ladies a lot. I prefer Bayley, but you know what, guys? Going into this matchup, I expected it to be a pretty good matchup, and I think they delivered. You know, it wasn't anything immaculate, nothing too memorable from this matchup. However, we do have a 10-time Women's Champion now after Charlotte defeats Bayley after locking in the figure eight and Bayley tapped out. And you know what, guys? I mean, I think they are definitely on the way. I know I've been saying this since her last five title reigns, but they're definitely trying to make this woman 16-time women's champion to match her father. And I understand it. You know, it makes for good headlines, and it makes for cool little moments and a cool plaque on WWEshop.com. But, you know, it's, I, I don't know, it, it, I guess we had our, our long break. WWE was like, all right, it's been long enough, and we're we're close to Bayley's hometown, so we might as well have her lose here like they always do. And Charlotte is your brand new women's champion on SmackDown side. So I guess Becky Lynch and Charlotte will be going their separate ways, and I'm kind of glad this is going to happen. So Charlotte will represent SmackDown in the draft, and Becky will represent Raw in the draft, and I guess they can separate and not have to feud anytime soon because, you know, you guys know how that is, that long-standing rivalry. It's like John Cena and Randy Orton at this point. But Charlotte is your new champion 10 times. My God. Uh, yeah, I, I hate it for Bailey, but at least her reign lasted longer than I thought it would. And you know what? It is what it is. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to talk about our main event of the evening. Okay, ho hold up. Just, just, just a second. Okay, that's that's much better now. So we have the main event, Seth freaking Rollins. My man Seth Rollins, the Universal Champion, defending his championship against the Fiend Bray Wyatt, the most over gimmick, the most unique gimmick that wrestling has seen in a long time. You know, it's been very unique. Everyone loves the Fiend. They love everything going on. I am a big fan of the Fiend gimmick and everything that Bray Wyatt is doing right now. And this main event, guys, was a total train wreck, in my opinion. I don't know what the hell to even think about this. You know, going in, I did not know what the hell was going to take place. You know, last year we had that no finish. It was Braun Strowman versus Seth Rollins. It ended in a no finish because Brock Lesnar got involved and everybody was pissed off about it because, you know, it's a Hell in a Cell match. There can't be a disqualification or a no contest in a Hell in a Cell match. That makes no freaking sense, right? Well, guess what, Brad? They come out in this match and it was pretty competitive. Uh, they, the whole match, you guys know if you watched it, those red lights, there was it was red and black the entire time and I thought it was just going to be something for Brad. Wyatt's entrance. No, Brad, they kept it the whole entire match. They kept it going the whole entire time. It was kind of obnoxious. You know, I thought it was all right at first, but then, like, as the match went on, I was like, Jesus Christ. It kind of, like, messed with my eyes. You couldn't tell what was what. The depth perception was a little bit off because everything was red and black, and it was just kind of difficult to tell what was going on at times. I mean, it kind of gave, like, a horror slash cinematic feeling to it, but at the end of the day, I would have preferred to just have regular lights. Not a big deal to me, but, you know, we did get some weapon spots. We got some cool 
back and forth between The Fiend and Seth Rollins throughout this matchup. But the end of this matchup, I think, is what everyone is going to be talking about. And my God, is this the most uniquely weird, dumb, awful thing I've ever seen. And WWE has backed themselves and booked themselves into the biggest corner that I've ever seen in my entire life. Okay, so Seth Rollins hits a curb stomp. Then he hits a curb stomp. No, he hit, early in the match, he hits a curb stomp, and the, the Fiend kicks out at one. It's like, okay, you know, we've seen that. I think Braun Strowman's done that, whatever. Uh, later on in the matchup, I think he hits three curb stomps in a row, a pedigree, another curb stomp, and the, the Fiend kicks out at one again. So Seth Rollins is like, what the hell is this? He hits like four more curb stomps. I think he hits a total of 10 or 11 or 12 curb stomps on the Fiend. He then gets a chair and gives him, I don't think he actually hit him in the skull with the chair, but he hit him like, you know how a concerto, you make it look like you hit the person in the skull, but you actually hit the ring with it. They did one of those and he kicks out at one again. So this man takes 12 curb stomps, a pedigree, a chair shot to the head, ladders to the head, uh, tools to the head, just over and over, and he keeps getting back up, and he keeps kicking out at one, keeps kicking out at two, keeps kicking out at ten, and he basically is unstoppable, so it kind of makes him look like a monster, but at the same time, you've booked yourself into a corner, because now, if this man ends up getting the championship, he's unbe- like, who the hell can beat somebody like that? And it, I don't know, man, it just looked obnoxious, and it looked way too over the top, it was way too overdone, I just don't understand why you couldn't have him have a competitive match, have Bray Wyatt win the Universal Championship. Instead, they they just book this horrendous ending with all these finishers and all these weapons, and, and they ended it in a DQ after Seth went to hit uh, the Fiend with a sledgehammer. He hit him with a sledgehammer. They call for the bell. The crowd is just raining booze on this mess, chanting AEW, chanting rematch, uh, restart the match, chanting all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, and after the matchup, they're trying to put him on a stretcher. He rises up after all this bullcrap. They've already thrown the match out. Puts the mandible claw on Seth Rollins. Hits him with the Sister Abigail. Throws him to the outside. Sister Abigail on the concrete. Uh, he does the mandible claw again. Seth Rollins is spitting up blood. And it's just a big mess, man. And everybody's booing the hell out of it. I don't know what to think about this, man. Oh, my God, guys. What the hell? did we just witness? One thing I will say is that I guess it makes you want to tune into Monday Night Raw to see what the hell's going on and, and whatever but at the same time it was the it made the wrestling business look stupid I think. I don't know. I don't know. I would love to know your thoughts down below guys but that's pretty much your Hell in a Cell 2019 pay-per-view. You thought they couldn't book an ending any worse than last year, and here they come this year with the craziest thing I've ever seen in a wrestling ring. I, I cannot wait to see what everybody thinks about this match. I, I don't know what to say. At the end, like, it was enjoyable up until the end where it was just like, what the freak is going on? I was genuinely confused. I, I did not know what was going on. I, I it's just, it, it's, it's, I'm speechless. I'm, I'm literally speechless after this, guys. He literally took 12 curb stomps, a pedigree, and multiple chair shots to the head, ladder shots to the head. Uh, and that was after going through a grueling Hell in a Cell match with Seth Rollins. Many, many super kicks, a curb stomp onto the hammer that he pulled out. It's ridiculous. The Fiend's unbeatable, but he's still not your champion. Seth Rollins still ends up with the Universal Championship, but that's going to do it for my Hell in a Cell 2019 review, guys. Please let me know down in the comment section below what the hell you thought of this main event. I thought it was freaking obnoxious and insane as hell, but who am I? Who am I? I don't know. Just just let me know down in the comment section below. That is going to do it for this review. Thank you guys for watching. Overall, you know, I thought there were some solid matches on this card, and it ended up crazy. It just ended up crazy. I'm speechless. I, I don't know what to say, but... Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure content and epic show reviews. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.